What's up everyone, welcome back to Among the Fence, my YouTube channel where I do music reviews. My name is Aaron, and today we're going to check out the new album Hide Mall by the band Enslaved. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it, but it is their 16th studio album, and it is based on Norse mythology, just like all their other albums. And Enslaved, for those of you who don't know, is an extreme metal band from Norway that's been around for about 30 years or so, and being from Norway, just, you know, just be prepared for me to butcher probably every single... A word or song name that uh, is in Norwegian because I'm, I'm not good at, at speaking Norwegian or even figuring it out on my own. A uh, wiki says that this band formed in 1991 and their debut album is Viking Giller Veldi, but Spotify says that they have three albums that came out before that album. And the first one is a black metal album that they dropped in 1992. And it sounds like the band went into a cave and they placed all the recording equipment and microphones and stuff at the, the front of the cave, the entrance of the cave. And that's how they recorded it. I mean, it's, it's as black metal as you could possibly get. Uh, they switched genres to extreme metal in 2003 though with the release of Monumention, I believe that's how it's pronounced. While I've been a fan of this band for a little while, I haven't really dived too much into their discography. I haven't listened to honestly like their first couple albums at all. This was the first time I ever did that. So this was all just a new experience for me and I had a great time going through their discography, listening to their music, really getting into it, especially the mythology stuff and the kind of Viking inspired things that they sing about. So yeah, it got me pumped for this album. So let's jump into it. The album opens up with a song behind the mirror and it begins with the sound of, I believe is like a, a rowboat. It sounds like it's rowing through the water very gently and it has haunting horns. The guitar riff that comes in sounds great and everything speeds up in the verse. The clean vocals and instrumentation make for a great atmosphere, but when the distorted vocals come in, they're just snarling and it makes everything so just gritty and intense and really dirty sounding. The progression and the musical transitions are fluid and they sound so good. There's no like wonky kind of situations between different sections of the songs where it's like they couldn't figure out a way how to piece the two together so just connected them and just let whatever happens happens they just flow really well throughout the entire song the narration and the lyrics tell a story of a journey as this is basically i believe it's like a viking journey that is happening throughout this album i'm not too sure there's a lot of metaphors and they're all great and either way it's a fantastic story Conjalia, I believe that's how it's pronounced, starts out with pounding drums and a swelling guitar riff over a chugging guitar part. It seems like this intro buildup goes on forever and ever, but then the vocals come in out of nowhere and it tells a story of someone who I'm assuming basically gave up everything to go on this journey and they're willing to die for it. And it sounds like a keyboard comes in around the three and a half minute mark and it adds even more sound to this gigantic wall of sound that's already coming at you. It drops out though when the vocals come back in and everything becomes more and more intense. Then the clean vocals make for like a more calming kind of section, even though the music's still pretty chaotic. But then the guitar solo comes in. And I'm usually not a huge fan of guitar solos. Just, I, I, I'm just over it after listening to a lot of instrumental work when I was younger. But this just sounds so good. The tone, the guitar tone is just Perfect. And then we have the song Forest Dweller, which has an inspiring lead guitar melody and addicting sounding rhythm. And the intro, the clean vocals have like, it, 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 it's so great. It's not what you would expect. The clean vocals are so crisp and they're very raw. And they come in with an acoustic guitar section and it makes for a pleasant surprise at the beginning of this song. And then there's a really quick snare buildup as the song just erupts into absolute chaos. The store of vocals come in with a really strong guitar riff and it basically takes over. It, it's got some soaring clean vocals that accents the distorted vocals and it makes almost like for a duet thing. And again, it's not at all what I was going to expect. It's a little bit more of a mainstream kind of style, but at the same time, they made it their own and you wouldn't even realize it's happening just because you're so lost within the music. They list King Crimson as one of their inspirations. And I gotta say, in the bridge of Forest Dweller, I can really hear that. I mean, they have a lot of other inspirations like Pink Floyd and Rush and stuff, but I mean, it really shines through in this song for sure. 
Kingdom is my favorite song on this album. It starts out with an ascending and descending guitar riff. It just moves up and down. And then it fades out a little bit for the synth and drums to come in. The guitar solo is pretty shreddy, but at the same time, pretty melodic. The clean vocals and the music and the chorus are absolutely ethereal. It sounds so freaking good. But then once you get to the verse, the synth and the distorted vocals bring out all the aggression in the song. The chorus is just so good though. The second time it comes around, it just hits you a little bit harder and it's just over too soon. And I had to listen to this song multiple times just so I could get more of it for my own enjoyment. The spoken words in the bridge section are a little awkward, I guess you could say. I don't know, it's not really my thing. But the music is absolutely incredible throughout this entire song. It made it really hard for me to review and take notes on it just because I kept getting lost and distracted in the music. I'd be like, okay, I'm, I've taken notes all the way up to the first chorus, so I'm going to tackle the verse now. And then I'd make it all the way through the song and all of a sudden I'd just like snap out of the transom and I'm like, crap, what, what even happened? I have to listen to it all over again now. And that happened about two or three so times for this, which isn't something that happens very often. So for me, that's a pretty huge uh, feat and accomplishment because normally when I go to do this, I, I, I'm, I'm laser focused on what I'm doing, but this one was tough. The Eternal Sea has a really haunting intro to it. And I would say that this is probably their most black metal sounding song on this album, at least so far until the, <laughs> the really strong sounding cleans come in, which are very powerful. The more out in front of the mix, than what they were before. The riff is great and it really drives the song along. The lyrics are basically Viking metal, but it's not like stereotypical, like the music sets it apart. It doesn't sound like a Mon Armoth or anything like that. Uh, the black metal comes back in the full force and I'm not the hugest black metal fan, if I'm gonna be completely honest, but I didn't hate this whatsoever. I didn't wanna skip over it. I didn't cringe over the vocals or the poor production, which is nowhere to be found on this album whatsoever. And it's very inspiring, this whole song altogether, especially in the end when they start chanting uh, Reconquer and it's very inspirational. And then we get to the song Caravans to the Outer Worlds, which kind of reminds me of Planet Caravan from Black Sabbath. I don't know if it's just because it has the word caravan in it. They don't really sound alike, but lyrically they're, I don't know, there's something there. Uh, it starts out with wind blowing and a really thick bass line. Then the synth fills most of the atmosphere before it explodes into this really crazy shreddy guitar solo and a very quick drum passage. The insanity goes away as it goes into a really groovy bridge filled with more shredding lead guitar parts. And then the second bridge is more mellow with spoken word stuff, which isn't it, it, at this point, it's not as awkward for me anymore. It's super epic though, because it, it, it's like the spoken word section is like a buildup. It kind of builds a suspense within the song. And then this fat freaking riff just comes in right in the outro. And it's just, it, it's the perfect like eye before the storm that I wasn't really expecting just because they didn't do it in any of the other songs. And I feel like a lot of bands like this kind of fall into the monotony of doing the same thing over and over and over again. And they did not do that. This whole song was a complete surprise to me from start to finish. It comes in sounding really heavy and then it just transitions all over the place. And then we have the closing track, which is also the title track, Heidemol. I believe that's how it's pronounced. All I know is it's the name of a Norse god that has to do with Thor. It starts out with a huge riff and a yell in the intro. It's extremely heavy and doomy and the lyrics are mostly in Norwegian so it makes it a little bit more uh, haunting just because I don't know what's being said. The music overall is absolutely amazing especially the guitar part. It makes me want to pick up my guitar and learn how to play it. The pace picks up quite a bit with a guitar solo that's again more melodic than just shredding and kind of mindless in that sense. Everything drops out almost completely for like a spoken word section and then a guitar comes in and it's played over like nature sounds like you can hear birds chirping and whistling in the background then a teen drum passage comes in and breaks through with this like thrash inspired riff and this whole thing sounds like it's inspired from like again like black sabbath and like early metallica i guess you could say the clean vocals and the synth finish this song off and i gotta say it's an absolutely tremendous closing track and this 
almost all the songs on this album are like uh, five to eight minutes long give or take it's only seven songs it's like 43 something minutes long and after this closing track i mean you just you, you can't get enough you want more of it and as you guessed it i absolutely love this album it's a lyrical and musical journey the clean vocals are used perfectly they never sound a cliche to me and they have a unique tone to them the distorted vocals weren't really my favorite they have like this black metal kind of quality to them even though they moved away from that genre it still is very much there even though it wasn't like unbearable for me whatsoever the production on this is great uh, it really lets you hear everything even in the most insane and chaotic moments you can still hear exactly what the guitars are doing you can hear the drums the vocals you can basically separate every single instrument as you're listening to it so it's not all just a bunch of mush and it's not just a bunch of noise with you know the same kind of riff over and over and over again and it, the same kind of like melody over and over again so the songwriting in it is definitely what won me over it's just so it's just so good i mean it moves the story along and at times it it mesmerized me and captivated me as i was trying to focus in on my review it made it hard for me to pay attention to what i was doing because i kept getting lost in it and the, the only issue I guess I could say that I had would be the distorted vocals at times in different songs where I feel like a different type of distortion to the vocal would have sounded better and like the clean vocals did all kinds of different things they were soaring at moments they were just spoken at you instead of saying uh, they were really quiet they were really strong and powerful at other times but the distorted vocals are always just snarled that's all they were they were just snarled every time and I feel like on songs like Caravans to the Outer World, where that outro hits and you have that really cool guitar riff, which is probably one of the best on this album, and they give you clean vocals, which, I mean, it sounds good, but, I mean, I, I prefer the clean over the snarly distorted, but if they had something like really low and guttural instead, to me personally, it would have hit me so much harder, and I, I my mind would have been blown. It would have been the sickest thing they've ever done. But... Again, that's not really what this band does. So I can't jar like George. I can't judge them too hard on that just because it, it, it's not them. They're not going to do something that they don't do, if that makes sense. And so, yeah. And like I said before, it's not like completely unbearable. I didn't hate it. I didn't find myself cringing like I do with a lot of other black metal stuff that I hear. So, yeah, I mean, I, I love this album. So with all that said, I got to give Hide Mall by Enslaved a 8 out of 10. But I want to know what you guys think. I'm sure a lot of you guys probably haven't listened to this band. And if it's something that you're interested in, go ahead and give a couple of these songs I mentioned a listen. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you would rate it and what your favorite song is. And if you enjoyed this review, don't forget to give it a like. If you want to help support me and my channel, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell icon. Doing that stuff helps me out tremendously. I thank you guys so much for sticking with me through all this time. I haven't uploaded in a little while. I've been feeling a little under the weather just because I... <laughs> the weather here in california has been absolutely insane last week it was in the 60s the beginning of this week it was really like rainy the middle of the week it was snowing like actually literally snowing here in southern california and now it's back up to being about 60 degrees again so my allergies are just all over the place and because of that i made this video a little bit more uh candid I, I i left mistakes in there just because i didn't want to exhaust my breath and my voice by doing a bunch of different takes. If I messed up on a word, I kind of just made fun of myself and moved on with it. And I hope you guys were okay with that. I hope, it didn't, I hope it didn't bug anybody too much or whatever, just because my editing on it isn't perfect. Like I try to do on other videos that I have where I mess up on saying something and I'll do like 20 takes on it just so I could get it right. This time around, I just kind of let whatever happened happen because I don't want to be sitting here all day talking, destroying what I have of my voice. So yeah. Again, thank you guys so much for sticking with me. Thank you so much for watching. And I hope you guys have a good rest of your day or night. Whenever you have me watching this. And I'll talk to you guys next time. I was